good evening friends i would like to thank rahul divan ji for calling me here and also shares and uh, believe me i am in it, it, it's really humbling to know that the, we all thinking around the same thing and we are at the same platform all of us are thinking and we are in such different parts of the country thinking and having the same thought and now because of social media we are all able to get it all together and actually see it happening i never thought i would get a platform to talk about right to education seriously because i have seen the fallout what has been happening i work with children with dyslexia children with learning disabilities for last 17 years i've been working uh, in mumbai uh, we have a certifying center the state level certifying center having worked there i've seen more than 35000 children with learning disabilities and the trend post rte has been very disturbing and uh, we will be discussing that in detail right i would say that we indians feel a lot about education even as a pediatrician the first year of life the children the parents come and ask us which school is the best in the neighborhood when we indians move abroad the first thing we find is good schools uh, you know neighborhood neighborhoods with good schools is it genetic for indians or is it years of conditioning before i move on to how the education evolved in india i would like to talk mention a little thing about how many of us have read this book called as a beautiful tree yes okay this is a this is an amazing book which talks about education system pre british era and what happens in the education system pre british era we had in certain areas literacy rate as high as 70% every village had a school which was something like ekal vidyalayas this is what we had we had teachers one or two teachers we had range of subjects which were being taught and if we compare to what was happening in britain during that time in 1801 the britain actually had only 3300 schools overall in 1850s they had 46000 schools while we had not less than 1 lakh schools only in the bengal and bihar as per the governor the british governor adam william similarly in punjab and madras also there was school so i mean we had a education system which was far superior and that got destroyed and that is what even gandhi ji referred as the beautiful tree and that actually got destroyed in less than 100 years and it was replaced by the modern education system in a foreign language with complete a completely ignoring our scriptures and our value system and that's where we land today anyways we got independence for uh, around the constitution committee that time also there was a little impetus to include education as a fundamental right the literacy rate that time was only 12% we were struggling we didn't have the means so it was put into the directive principles uh, it took around 20 years for the next edu uh, national education policy to come in and that time again the education literacy rate was somewhere around 28 30% what was thought was that there was a lot of disparity now here i would like to say disparity as in the rural and urban divide was very huge there was a lot of gender disparity which has actually stayed over the years it has not gone away there is a discrepancy of around 20% and which has actually stayed it has not gone away even with a lot of effort marginalized section there was a lot of disparity so what was the goal set in the education policy was let's go to the villages so 90% coverage was what was thought in the first policy and it was again thought that uh, and formally it was adopted to have the 10 plus 2 plus 3 system of education two main results and it was expected to move on and improve what happened later in 76 we had this amendment wherein uh, education became the concurrent list subject prior to that it was a state list subject so the responsibility of taking the education from the city to the village was entirely of the state government which the states were not able to do hence it was taken into consideration that let's have it in the concurrent list so the state makes the policies monitors and also takes the financial responsibility for education right so following that what happened then we had the 86 policy national education policy which was 
reviewed and this is the first time of course more or less the goals goals were the same universal elementary education reaching to the most uh, remotest place is possible 90% coverage one sc school in the radius of 1 km was what was thought about and again but that's the first time the recommendation to include education as a fundamental right was again put forth that's why it becomes very very important for us 86 amendment all of us know actually made education as a fundamental right numerous programs were put in we are all aware of these programs we had this uh, i mean a very very descriptive and elaborate program called as sarva shiksha abhiyan in 2002 we had madhyavik shiksha abhiyan in 2005 6 maybe 9 and then we had uchchhata shiksha program so the lot of programs which have been on paper and i mean and uh, implemented then but what actually happened where did the yeah what was the happening to the literacy rates let's see by that time okay so we gradually moved up the literacy rate up there and we've reached to 74% so it was around 6 to 8% is what we moved roughly every 10 years every census we moved this much and the gender disparity still stays it was 18% to start with and we are still at 16% so we've not really moved much over there what did we do with the gdp our gdp earlier was 0.64% in 1951 and we've moved and we are bordering somewhere around 4% most of the developed countries would put in 6 to 8% of their gdp in the education sector so and there's been a lot of impetus to increase it above 6% that's what has been asked for in more, more and more policies and we trying to reach there probably then what happened how did this right based approach came in that is very very important for us to understand what happened was that india also participated in education for all a unesco initiative wherein all the members a common educational global educational goal was set in that we will all reach universal elementary education basic education sab bachcho ko milega by 2000 year all the members who were there ratified and they were given instructions to go and implement it understand your system make changes and we'll meet in 2000 when we met back in 2000 our literacy rate was only 53% so we were never close to 100% there and i think if i go back and see what was happening to the you know, 2001 census also we were 64% right besides that in 1992 India ratified to UNCRC that is UN Convention for Rights of Children in which education has been put as one of the rights for the child okay and interestingly the only two countries who have still not ratified to UNCRC are anybody US and South Sudan Somalia also ratified in i think in 2015 okay so here we move on so this now then the universal uh, uh, goal was revised to 2010 and then it was thought that even that doesn't seem possible so what was done there was the next goal which was universal retention by 2020 so kya ho gaya education was replaced by retention and that's the objective what our rt is also presenting over a period of time okay we come down from that then in 2002 as it became our main uh, we took it as a fundamental right the education there was need for a law to enact it so rte had been under discussion from 2004 onwards on and off it was presented the state said we cannot implement it there's a lot of financial burden which will be on the states and hence we cannot do it so it it went it was tabulated back and forth earlier the reservation for the marginalized was thought to be 50% which they reduced and brought it down to 25% so we'll move on to and talk about a little about that besides that before we move on to the right to education which is what i'll be discussing more in detail let's see what happened to the minority institutes uh, uh, 
Uh, Aryan, you will be talking a lot about 93rd Amendment and all of that, right? So, uh, but just to give us this, that 93rd Amendment was brought in wherein the minority institutes were exempted from the state reservation quota, which was earlier uh, minority as well non-minority unaided private institutions were exempted from the state quota which was uh, uh, by a landmark judgment in 2005, 2006 an amendment was brought and that will be dealt separately. I will not get into the details of it. Following that, but it and to uh, decide who are the minority institute, there was a national minority commission was instituted in 2010. The reason I have put in the slide is it was made in 2010 and by the time the 2011 census says that Hindus are already mi minority in so many states and that commission by its own structure cannot have a Hindu as a member while they decide on the minority status, right? So that was a little thing I wanted to mention before I move on. So what happens? We had Right to Education Act. So it's like a... It's like a beautiful framework. That's what I was discussing with people before we started off. Looks very nice. Gives a, uh, uh, follows all the principles of education. Uh, it gives a right-based approach. So it's, it becomes a state's responsibility. Now, government ki zimmedari ho gai ki har bache ko padhana hai. So kaise padhayenge? Har bache ko school mein leke jayenge. That that was that is what exactly happened. But they realize by this time. Only the government sector cannot do it. I'll tell you, I'll come to it and tell you why the government sector itself cannot do it. Now, so they said that 25% of the children would be taken uh, from the marginalized uh, section by the private schools and that would be reimbursed in a due course of time. There was also a provision of any child who's been out of school. school The whole aim is to get everybody in school. We are looking at universal retention. Har bacha school mein jana chahiye. That was the whole aim, right? So if the child has not gone to school, we put him in a classroom. How do we decide the classroom? Uske age ke basis pe. So we decide that if the child is 13 year old, probably he goes in the 7th or 8th standard. If the child is 10 years old, he goes in the 5th standard. Irrespective of the learning level, right? So that, that is something which uh, was also put in the clause. No detention till 8th standard. So once the child gets into the education system, he does not move out till he finishes his elementary education. Right? So that was one more thing which was put on. No detention till 8th standard. Because elementary education, we um, consider kar rahe hai, 6 to 14 years of age. And so till 8th standard. So once the child goes into a primary school, does not move out to the secondary school. So there will be no detention, uh, no detention of the children and hence we are trying to retain the children. Okay. So then now let's see how RTE has impacted all of this. Now availability factor if we look at availability basically when we are looking at this the availability means the buildings, the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure which is required for proper learning. Now, RTE is like something like a quality check we have. We have NABH accreditation for the hospitals. This is what something happened with RTE. RTE came out with very standard quality norms as regards to building structure, separate toilets for boys and girls, playground facility, uh, boundary wall around the school, kitchen sheds. So, bahut sare points ki unhone bola hai, apka agar school uh, apko rakhna hai, to ye ye points follow honne chahiye. Ye ye apka requirement hai. Aur apko wo requirement within three days, three years pura karna hai. जब से जब भी एक स्टेट लेके आरटीई को चालू करेगा तीन साल के अंदर आपका सब रिक्वायरमेंट पूरा होना चाहिए राइट सो दैट इज व्हाट दे डिड नाउ देन वी मूव ऑन टू देन दे आल्सो गेव नॉर्म्स अबाउट द क्वालिटी ऑफ टीचर्स तो टीचर का रिक्वायरमेंट क्या है सो इट हैज टू बी क्वालिफाइड टीचर्स उनका ट्रेनिंग होना चाहिए उनका सैलरी होना चाहिए अप टू अ सर्टेन लेवल इंक्रीज इन द सैलरी होना चाहिए टीचर स्टूडेंट रेशियो डिफाइन होना चाहिए क्लासरूम टीचर रेशियो डिफाइन होना चाहिए सो लॉट ऑफ नॉर्म्स एंड so the schools have to comply with that and agar nahi comply karte in case of non compliance there are fines and penalties for the same okay so this is what it did when it came to the physical infrastructure so here we go so every child should 
uh, be given uh, between the age of 6 to 14 years have a right for free and compulsory education section 15 talks about pr procedure for withdrawal of recognition allowances and salaries uh, services and salaries allowances of the teachers training for the training of the teachers also and the state government is authorized to make rules ev in every stage in order to carry out these um, uh, uh, these pro uh, provisions of the act okay within 3 years the school should gain recognition and agar nahi hota hai to usko 1 lakh ki penalty hogi ya 10000 per day tak ka fine hai okay this is what came out in the this is all written this is from the act now let's look at the level of schools what is happening to schools now when we look at the schools we have around 14 lakh schools in india as per the census 2014-15 this is all data from uh, mhrd so it's all available in public domain now so out of these 14 lakh schools around 80 percent of the schools are government schools okay then we had 20 percent are private sector schools okay but that 80 percent of the schools are catering to 60 percent of the enrollments so 60 percent students go to this 80 percent schools and 20 percent of schools are catering to 40 percent okay so the participation of private sector is huge right now okay now then we go on to and look at some now when we look at the school types the primary schools are around 57 percent the upper primary is 6 7 8th then you have the uh, primary with upper primary so the schools from first to eighth standard that's around 29 percent and then you have only 14 percent schools are the secondary schools which are nine standard onwards so even if you do 100 percent retention and enrollment you don't have infrastructure to cater to that need you have 57 percent schools which are primary only primary schools you have another 19 percent schools with primary and secondary and only 10 percent so against 57 percent even if we say we only have 29 percent of schools which have upper primary so even if you want to retain all of them where are they going to go because they are not enough schools and 14 percent for the secondary now school availability then it's it's a data from 2009 comparative data the number of schools and 2015 the primary schools have marginally increased yeah, and similarly the upper primary but they're still half you know when you look at the values it's 8 lakh 14 thousand primary against 4 lakh 18 thousand uh, secondary uh, upper primary schools right so this is what is happening secondary schools are way, way low and senior secondaries are of course very low so even if there is a marginal increase we are there is no way we can accommodate the universal retention here that is the point I wanted to put across now look at what is the condition as regards to infrastructure in these uh, government schools 92 percent of the schools have boys toilet 84 percent of girls toilet interestingly only 44 percent have a hand wash facility next to the toilet i mean that it's, it's so atypical that i had to put it here 62 percent schools have boundary walls schools with playground are 58 percent electricity connection in only 52 percent of the schools computers in 43 percent functional computers out of that 43 percent probably the 63 percent have it midday meals are provided in 88.6 percent schools kitchen shed which is one of the rules infrastructure norms for RTE is only in 75 percent of schools now this is what is happening to the government schools or the recognized schools if we put it across now what is the impact of RTE then one the norms which are available are not pan India norm. Uh, they are pan India norms as in they are the same norms for a small village versus Mumbai or Delhi right so what happens I mean obviously the space constraints the space value everything is different you cannot have the same norms for across the country so there uh, there has to be revision revision of norms in case you are thinking uh, what also happens is there is a very disturbing trend of children being pulled out of government schools and put into the budget private schools as high as 75 percent of children are attending private schools in a recent survey in the city of Mumbai and Patna 
Mumbai, I have seen the municipal school shutting down. They don't have enrollments. The teachers are actually given incentives to go and get children. One, because they are in vernacular medium. Second, the quality of education is very low. And we would see that quality a little later in uh, other slides. So what is happening now? These children obviously had a choice. The parents had a choice of putting them into a government school, which is free, which is also in the neighborhood, and a budget private school, which is also in the neighborhood, but is charging somewhere around 200, 300, 400 rupees fees per month. But parents chose that. Now with RTE, we'll have a shutdown of these schools. One, because they cannot afford to have that 25% children uh, from the marginalized society, uh, section, maybe their profit margins are only that much, so it makes them unviable. The RTE norms are not practical to be applied. So quite a few schools are getting into voluntary closure. Now we don't have a consolidated data, but there are 7,000 schools in Maharashtra has been given notice, served notice under RTE. Around 1,200 schools in Haryana and Punjab have closed down. Around 600 schools in Hyderabad has closed down. So there has been a lot of uh, reports from here and there. Of course, the, a lot of this, this data is available. At a conservative measure or just a, uh, we feel that at least 10 to 15,000 schools will close down if RTE is implemented strictly, which would mean at least 30 lakh children out of school. Even if we take an enrollment of 200 per school, most of these budget schools will have 150s, 160, 180, 220 sort of children. That, that's the population they have. So even if we take a ballpark figure of 200, 30 lakh bache bahar chale jayenge system se. Jab ye school sare band ho jayenge. Why they were in the school and not in a government school is something which is debatable. So parents ke paas kya option rahega? Ya to hum government school mein bhej dein jo humne pehle reject kiya hua tha. Right? Reject kiya hai, wo reason same hai. Unka bhi infrastructure bahut achha nahi hai. That we have seen already in the slide. Ki unka infrastructure bahut achha nahi hai. The quality of education is even worse than the smaller schools which were there. Or the other option is minority run secular schools. Right? Which are imparting education to our children. So minority run schools exempted hai from RTE as per a 93rd amendment. So they can provide, they will be the only uh, stakeholders left in the private sec sector to provide education. Or the third option is if this particular school your child is going in survives RTE, wahan pe fees raise hoga. Kyunki wo 25% jo fees nahi mil raha hai, jo free bachche aare hai, somebody has to pay for it. So fees raise hoga plus agar unko jage kharid ke classrooms badhane hai, playground banana hai and if they can actually do it, uska bhi cost to parents and bachcho ko bear karna padega. So the cost will rise. So choice is now three. Ya to aap government school mein bachche ko bejo, ya to aap minority run secular institutes mein bejo, jaha pe we know what happens. We are all sitting here and we don't need to get into the details as to what happens over there. And the third option is aap same school mein higher fee mein continue karo. So those are the three options which the parents would have now. And another point here, 80% of schools are government schools. They are exempted from RTE. Agar hum minority institutes 3% bhi pakarte hain. 83% jo minority mein yaha pe religious minority bhi hai, linguistic minority bhi hai. Hindu linguistic minority bhi hai, religious minority bhi hai. 3% or it could be probably a little more. Now, if we have, so what happens, 83% of the schools are exempted from a particular law. Then why have a law which only targets 17-18% of the people? Isn't it? It is literally, I have made a law, but 8 people will not follow, only 2 people will follow that law. How is it going to make any sizable impact on the quality of education or infrastructure also? Jab aapne 83% ko exempt kar diya hai. Right? So from this availability, we move on to the quality aspect. Now, acceptability is actually the quality check. So there are two provisions, three provisions rather I want to talk about, sections I want to talk about it. One is special provision for children not admitted. Since I said earlier, everybody has to be brought back to the school. So what has to be done? Jo bhi age mein bacha hai, usko hum classroom mein dal denge. 
right? That was the whole aim. I have a little experience here. I work with five destitute homes. Uh, in one of the homes in Lucknow where we work, uh, the first year we started, we picked up 30, 30 children and informal education in that home we started providing. Now these children did well. So by the end of the year, we started thinking that in am structured proper school made all sakte. So we started looking for a budget school close by because destitute uh, government run destitute home ke bache, we can't send them very far away. So there are a lot of logistic issues. Now these 10 children we identified and we said like this year we'll try with 10 children, next year we'll add on children. Now these 10 children, out of them 9 children, all these children are more than 10 years of age. So when we went to school, that was somewhere around 2012-13. So the principal was very well aware of the RTE. So the principal told us, ma'am we'll put the children as per their age. I said no, they won't be able to cope up. And we had to convince her again and again and I made, made the children do certain stuff and see it over there that these children cannot cope up. It's just not possible for them to cope up. So the principal reluctantly agreed and we put these children in third standard and second standard. Though these children were 11, 12 years of age. One of the kids had recently got transferred to that home from Noida. And Noida mein wo seven standard attend kar tha in one of the schools. So the child looked a little bigger also, maybe around 14, 15. So he was also a little reluctant to go to a lower standard. So we had to admit him in the 7th mein hi diya. Result kya hua? My uh, children who went to 3rd standard were able to cope up. We worked on these children and we were able to get them double promotion. So ye bachche jo 3rd mein the, wo 5th mein aage. But jis bachche ko humne 7th mein admission karaya tha, he dropped out. Because he was feeling that learning gap. I am not sure how to do this. If you have a school, you can't do this. But those children, you can't put them as per the age because they just won't be able to cope up. Right? That's exactly what happened. So now, when you are talking of this problem, this problem is very big. So, this is exactly what happened. So, now, when you are talking of this provision, I have a strong objection to it. When I say that, that they will not be able to cope up, there are huge learning gaps. Now, who is supposed to bridge this gap? RTE says the teacher is supposed to bridge the, bridge the gap. Honestly tell me which teachers in a regular school without any skill, without any training is going to actually bridge this gap. Aap mujhe bataiye. Teacher ke paas na time hai, na skill hai, na inclination hai. Kuch bhi nahi hai to actually work on these children. And these children are more likely to drop out again. And wo bachche school se bahar hai, uske kaafi logistic issues hai. It's not only that the children didn't want it to go. There were a lot of issues. Even if we pull them and put them back, now the child factor, the child will be so demotivated that he will not stay in the system for long. Then we move on to the next one. No child admitted in the school shall be held back in any class or expelled from school till the completion of elementary education. Now I have a very, very strong objection to this. Uh, my first objection to this particular section is that whatever happened, this RTE came into picture, everybody knew about this provision the first. I don't know how. So within the first year, baki uh, structural norms nahi malum hai logo ko, 25% quota bhi nahi malum hai, uske liye school management is worried. The parents are not worried, the children are not worried, the teachers are not worried. But this clause, the day it came, there was such a huge hue and cry about it, that it was well publicized. I personally feel that there was a ground prepared by disproportionate media, media coverage of suicide cases. And hence, you know, that it was shown that this is to take the stress out of the system. Right? There were a lot of, I mean, I personally feel that every suicide is a personal tragedy. But a suicide of less than 10, people, 10 children against 20 crore children in school is very disproportionate. Right? So it's not that huge a problem as it was projected. So what happened? Now how did parents, children and teachers looked at this right to education? They looked at it as right to of the child to move to the next class irrespective of learning. So right to education was perceived as the right of the child to move to the next class without learning. That is exactly what happened. Following that, what do we then let's go back to the data and see what actually happened to the Enrollments. So enrollments 
uh, when we look at the data we see the third year i have compared 5 6 9 10 which is exactly uh, the rte when it was implemented and 5 years down rte now the enrollment is actually dip down if you see and we are talking of enrollment this is not retention this is not children passing out this is the enrollment okay so this is level by enro enrollment primary upper primary it increased a little bit secondary it increased a little bit but it's 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 all still less than 50% of the primary so we could still retain the children in the primary let's look at the now here what happens is this is the gross enrollment ratio again here what we see we see the trends which are falling but overall there has been a little jump you see from primary to secondary there is a huge tip this is all enrollment then we talk of retention as per the NEP uh, 2016 data itself now primary retention was 83 percent upper primary which is up to the 8th standard the retention has been 67 percent which means 4 out of every 10 children enrolled left the school without finishing primary education so did you know no detention policy actually helped in retention it did not right then let's look at the quality check so let's look at the quality of education what happened this is all lesser data now we're looking at 2006 10 and 14 data what happened now this is standard third children who could read at least first standard level textbook right this moved from and there is all india data government schools and the private schools there is a huge you see the yellow bars are way up so definitely says that the quality of education even in the budget private schools is much higher right as compared to the government counterparts that's the reason the children are moving right then all India, we were still not more than 50% at any point of time. Even in 2006, we were around 48%. And, but the private schools, we were at 58%, which has stayed more or less the same. 58%, then there's 57%, 59%. But in the government schools in 2004, you see the dip. From 48%, it's come down to 31%. Okay, this, this is what happened to education went down obviously that's what we are trying to say the quality of education only uh, uh, around 31 percent children could read a book of first standard who were in third standard so so what has happened the these budget schools still maintain the level of uh, the quality of education but it dipped a lot in the government run schools okay then we move on to others this is fifth standard child who could read a third third grade book here again, it was 51% to start with, went down to 48% by 14. Government schools, the, uh, again, it, uh, there was a huge dip seen in the government schools as compared, but the private schools more or less stayed the same. This is the third standard child who could do at least subtraction, right? So third standard child, again, the dip here is a lot more even in the private school. But the government school, only 17.3% children can actually do that. Similar data for the fifth standard who could do uh, division sums. So this is exactly what happened. So let's move on from this. So our experience also, since we are working with these destitute homes, nearly 40% of the children in the sixth standard could not even recognize alphabets, all, all the alphabets in any of the languages. So it's Hindi, Marathi and English. All the three languages, they could not recognize all alphabets at the sixth standard level. But then these are the children who are really out of school. Right? And we've now started stimulating them. 20% could only cope up and 40% were only at the word stage. So alphabet ho gaya, words ho gaya and basic addition subtraction was achieved. Now what happened post this thing? The impact on children was, since it was very well publicized, the children knew whatever happens, the teacher cannot detain me. Right? So what happens, the motivation level went very down. Please understand, children don't think like us. Children have very poor abstraction. 
very concrete thinking they are at the non operational stage till around 13 14 years of age uh, so they till 8th standard they have no clue as to what is happening if i ask a 12 year old what will you do after 10 years you know what he is going to tell me i'll be 22 this is how children respond this is how children are and we took away and and it was a time with the media boom with the internet lot of distractions i feel sad for our children we we were luckily i mean born in the era where we didn't have so many distractions so we didn't know what to do so we might as well study right but our children have too many things to look at and it's it's uh, it's uh, a disadvantage for our children right so then we move on from here what happened to the parents now parents typically move to the entitlement approach that's what i would talk I was talking to the gentleman here initially the first reaction was they were very relaxed happy no failing we all happy right the educated parents were watchful so they started figuring out the children are not learning kahin kuch miss out hai see if my child goes to school and fifth standard mein usko second ka table nahi aata i'll be worried but agar जो पेरेंट एडुकेटेड नहीं है बट उसने बच्चे को प्राइवेट स्कूल में भेजा अच्छे स्कूल में भेजा इवन प्रॉब्लली अ बिग स्कूल लाइक डीपीएस और डीएवी में भेजा उसने बच्चे को बट ही हिमसेल्फ इज नॉट एम्पावर्ड टू मॉनिटर व्हाट लर्निंग इज हैपनिंग तो क्या हुआ द गैप एंड जो गवर्नमेंट स्कूल में गए वहां पर क्वालिटी ऑफ एजुकेशन वी ऑलरेडी नो वॉट इज हैपनिंग राइट सो ये जो हमारा डिवाइड है इन द सोसाइटी दैट बिकेम इवन मोर डीपर so the educated person ka bachcha educated raha jo uneducated hai uska bachcha mein learning problems aa rahe hain and we don't even know what is happening right so that is where the divide became even more stronger so it did not uplift all the children at the same level that is what happened then we look at what happened to the impact of uh, teachers and students teachers initially were aghast believe me aghast with this provision they didn't know what to do so uh, and uh, since it was very well publicized so everybody knew that the child cannot be retained so the attitude of the teacher changed over a period of time our teachers we must understand are not so empowered lot though there are a lot of teachers training program which are more in the government sector than in private sector and a lot of training is happening in spite of that of course we have very poor quality of education that's a different story altogether but when the teachers and principals have sat with the principals i work a lot with schools and the principals principals say that when we call the parents parents don't want to come so because earlier at least we had this rule that two times the child is detained in a class the school could throw the child out good the tc to the child now no fear like that was left with the parents so the parents stopped coming to schools parents stopped paying attention to what is happening to the child and eventually and the teachers would say If I have a child in fifth standard who doesn't know subtraction, it's not my fault. It is the fault of the previous teacher. So hence the owning up completely stopped. This is what happened with the teachers. Now we move on. Now interestingly, all the minority schools take exemptions from the RTE norms, but they still followed the no detention policy. So you pick up what is convenient to you. You drop what is not convenient to you. right when we move on to what happened now what we started seeing since i was seeing children with learning problems were referred to me what we started seeing is that maximum children were held back in the 9th standard because till 8th everybody passed there was no learning happening but everybody was getting promoted then in 9th standard the children were detained so what was the choices now staying back in the school was not a norm in a class was not a norm we had a lot of children who failed and who you know then ultimately got integrated with the next class it was all okay abhi ye nahi ho raha tha so abhi ek bacche ko rokna was a big prestige issue for the parents and the psychological burden on the child the child will get depressed the child will have a lot of stress it is shaming iske liye bachcho ko private 10th standard ke classes mushroom out hue and a lot of children started going and doing this private ssc or private 10th standard board besides this a lot of children also moved to open school there is an alternative uh, uh, education board uh, national institute of open schooling so a lot of children moved to that but we have to understand what happened to these children so even if they did 10th what would happen later a recent there was a statement by 
our honorable minister uh, mr javrekar saying that 40% of our engineering graduates are employable and it made a lot of headlines now the children who are already engineering graduate are the children who are pre rte probably because 10th kiya 2 saal kiya aur fir 4 saal kiya to 6 saal pehle unhone 10th ya 8th tak kiya or maybe 8 years before they were in 8th standard so they were not victim of this uh, automatic promotion any which way and these are the children who are not employable imagine what would happen to our children when they come there i mean it's it's such a scary picture what i had seen was uh, why learning does not happen just two minutes i'll dwell upon and then move on there are multiple causes for learning not happening right it could be something somebody who has dyslexia somebody who has understanding kam hai cognitive ability kam hai to wo slow learner mild intellectual capacity mein aa jate hain so there are children with that also environmental causes thoda hota hai one fraction will have environmental causes like this policy uh, there could be medical condition there could be i mean at least 20 reasons i can talk about jiski wajah se learning arrest hoti hai now learning is a very complex phenomena किस लेवल पे अरेस्ट हुई है क्या कारण है अगर हम नहीं जानेंगे तो वी कैन नॉट लेट द चाइल्ड लर्न फर्दर सो व्हाट हैपेंस देयर इज सो वी हैव हैड चिल्ड्रन जो नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड में है और उनका लर्निंग लेवल इज ओनली थर्ड स्टैंडर्ड वी हैव हैड चिल्ड्रन एंड व्हेन यू टॉक टू द पेरेंट्स ऑफ दीज चिल्ड्रन यू शुड सी हाउ दे फील इट्स इट्स लाइक लिटरली द एंड ऑफ द लाइफ बिकॉज विद अ लर्निंग गैप ऑफ फाइव एंड सिक्स ईयर्स in ninth standard there is nothing you can do about it even the best of the remedial teachers the best of the schooling can do nothing about this child and then there is a social stigma ki 10th pass karana hai what happens after 10th standard so this is what is actually happening so so for me taking away the right uh, right to education has actually taken away the right to learning from my children that's how i look at it now we move on to from this physical harassment bit Do I have a slide on that? I don't think so. No. Uh, so physical harassment. Uh, though I do not, at any point of time, advocate any kind of punishment to children. I'm a very non-violent person, so I would never ever advocate that. But again, this is another thing which was publicized. So the result, what happened is the teachers do not have the authority to even close the door when the class is going on. So what happened? the children and then we have inclusion so inclusion mein jitne bhi mere bacche hain they all started walking out of this classroom walking here and there the classroom became very disruptive severe behavioral problems happened and the learning still went further down that's all i have to say the teachers were not empowered agar punishment nahi dena hai so what kuch to karna padega to get discipline so were they taught how to discipline without any kind of physical punishment or mental harassment or just you know giving them uh, uh, some kind of things and that you better do well sort of stuff okay so we move on from this to the last bit of my talk which is accessibility and adaptability now accessibility is what we'll be talking later is 25% of the underprivileged or marginalized children have to be included because accessibility means education should be available to all so all sections of society without any disparity now inclusive education was taken in later wherein the right to education was extended to children with all sorts of disabilities okay so now we move on to that and see what happened okay, we'll we'll go on and see now when we talk of disability the uh, according to the census 2011 we have only 2.2% people who are disabled okay now this 2.2% people are nowhere close to the global 10% disability figure so the disability is supposed to be around 10% of the global figure and we are only able to detect 2.2% disability last census was 2.1% so in 10 years we only picked up 0.1% disability more okay this is what is the status of disability when we look at individual disabilities dyslexia jis pe main kaam karti hu specialize karti hu 10% 8 to 10% of school going children are found to have dyslexia prevalence rate global prevalence prevalence rates i'm talking about a lot of indian studies autism is 1.2% adhd hyperactive bachche rehte hain na jo baith nahi sakte class mein wo ek problem hai wo ek developmental disorder hai 
उसका अराउंड फाइव टू सेवन परसेंट ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन हैव नाउ इफ वी पुट इट ऑल टूगेदर डेन डाउन सिंड्रोम के बच्चे होते हैं विच इज वन इन सिक्स हंड्रेड लाइफ बर्थ सो इतने सारे कंडीशन हैं न्यूरोलॉजिकल कंडीशन हैं मेडिकल कंडीशन हैं विच मेक अ चाइल्ड डिसेबल राइट सो डिसेबिलिटी अभी नया एक्ट आ रहा है उसमें थर्टी वन टाइप ऑफ डिसेबिलिटीज आर इंक्लूडेड एंड विच इज गो बी कमिंग प्री सून इन द फाइनल ड्राफ्ट बट अर्लियर वी ओनली रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू सिक्स डिसेबिलिटीज एज पर द आर सी आई बट ठीक है नाउ वी मूविंग अहेड सो नाउ द कोहोट इज टेन परसेंट ऑफ डिसेबल्ड चिल्ड्रन हैव टू बी इंक्लूडेड इन अ क्लास रूम नाउ आई मीन देर बी लॉर ऑफ पीपल हेयर ऑल्सो हु आर एडवोकेट्स ऑफ इंक्लूसिव एजुकेशन बट आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू वेन यू गो इन अ क्लास रूम द टीचर स्टूडेंट रेशियोज फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी स्टूडेंट्स पर टीचर and you have an autistic child and you have an hyperactive child and you have three dyslexic children in the same class how will the teacher manage teaching all of them optimally i have been witness to a court case wherein i was called as an expert this was a child with autism in a very very elite school typically after rte the parents had this right based entitlement approach towards the whole issue this child has been in the same school since pre primary and the school has coped up this now this child is in sixth standard and they uh, what started happening now the child is getting disruptive abhi wo seekh nahi raha hai school mein because school is not equipped to teach him there is not specialist who is going to teach an autistic child in a regular school there is a shadow teacher jo kafi cost karti hai parents ne shadow teacher bheja hai bacche ke sath baithta hai but you should see the child कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन द क्लास उसको कुछ इंस्ट्रक्शन समझ जाते हैं द टीचर हैज टू पॉइंट देन ही स्टार्ट राइटिंग द टीचर हैज टू डू द फिजिकल पॉइंटिंग तब वो बच्चा पेन उठाता है पेन उसको हाथ में देते हैं फिर वो लिखना शुरू करता है ये सब तो ठीक है उसके बाद जब रिसेस होती है गैप होता है लंच ब्रेक्स होते हैं इतनी आवाज होती है कि वो बच्चा ऐसे कान पकड़ के ही कीप्स रॉकिंग एंड ही कीप्स मेकिंग सम नॉइजेस अब ये बच्चा आपको लगता है कि स्कूल में सीखेगा वाई इज अ चाइल्ड सेंट टू स्कूल द फर्स्ट थिंग इज ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू लर्न एंड नाउ द पेरेंट्स आर टू बिजी फाइटिंग विद द स्कूल एंड द कोर्ट एंड गोइंग टू द मीडिया एंड मेकिंग अ बिग शो एंड क्राई अबाउट इट दैट दे फॉगॉटन दैट देव टू एक्चुअली टीच द चाइल्ड सो माई रिकमेंडेशन टू देम वॉज इट्स ओके टू कीप द चाइल्ड इन अ रेगुलर स्कूल बट आई वॉन्ट द पेरेंट्स टू डू दीज दीज थिंग्स एंड सबमिट Uh, reports every three months if they want to be in this system because the child ultimately has to learn. That's one child. When you work with children with Down syndrome, what happens? These children are able to cope up till primary. उसके बाद नहीं कर सकते because उनकी I Q low होती है. I Q उनकी slow learner के range में होती है. Seventy होती है I Q. Normal I Q हमारी ninety plus होनी चाहिए. अब वो जब वो primary upper primary में पहुँचते हैं तो maths concepts vocabulary makes no sense to them. so they are just not able to cope up to wahan pe kya hona chahiye inclusion mein curriculum differentiation hona chahiye unke liye separate curriculum hona chahiye unke liye separate paper banna chahiye to wo hum nahi kar pate so we have started inclusion by the law without being actually ready for inclusion that is exactly what has happened okay again when we look at now at which level we need to intervene that is important one the parents have to understand the basic aim has to be learning and there it, it shouldn't be just a conflict situation which happened in this child second the teachers have to be empowered you see sarva shiksha abhiyan document if anybody has seen it beautifully writes down theory about all our disabilities it has got beautiful checklist as annexures at the end of the document but i can challenge a uh, teacher probably in a small town maybe let's talk of sitapur in up anybody knows where it is it's a very small town right so a teacher over there a primary teacher over there versus a teacher in mumbai do they have the same level of awareness you have the same norms you have the same inclusive education this child i'm talking about is given a shadow teacher there are two counselors in the school and parents are supportive but imagine at a district level or at a you know village level school mein aap inclusion karaoge to kya hoga are we ready for inclusion i have nothing against inclusion ultimately so what i suggest is the inclusion has to be faced it, there could be nodal centers for particular disability 
एंड सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल एक सेंटर अगर एक डिस्ट्रिक्ट में है जो कि हम विजुअल हैंडीकैप पे खाली हैंडल करते हैं तो वहां पे सारे विजुअली चैलेंज बच्चों को हम वहां भेज सकते हैं फ्रॉम द डिस्ट्रिक्ट थ्रू द ट्रांसपोर्ट अरेंज बाय द स्टेट एंड दैट कुड बी अ सेंटर फॉर रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट स्पेशल एजुकेटर्स प्रेवलेंस स्टडीज वी कैन डू लॉट्स विद वन गुड नोडल सेंटर फॉर ईच डिसेबिलिटी इन ईच डिस्ट्रिक्ट रादर देन ट्राइंग टू हैव दीज चिल्ड्रेन इन एवरी स्कूल that that is what i would suggest and again a lot of courses we don't have rehab people in maharashtra state government has put in one counselor in every school two special educators in every school where do we have special educators and teachers to actually go in and do the job there so so there's a there's a lot of disconnect happening there okay uh, now uh, this data i had actually picked up because i was planning to extend the service i know it's it's very less you can't be seen but it's i'll tell you the gist it's we are able to only pick up 0.2% out of the total children who went to school for the ssc that's the 10th and 12th board exams out of 30000 only 600 odd were children with ld certificate learning disability certificate and it was only 0.2% is what we have picked up and this is the condition in mumbai which i think is the dyslexia capital of the country seriously the level of awareness which we have over there thanks to uh tare zameen pe and a lot of that i mean media uh, whatever said and done uh, uh, helps us so the post tare zameen pe i had lovely experience everybody said my child is like ishan and everybody wanted a remedial teacher like amir khan actually people have come and demanded that so of course that's not doable and it was very dramatic but yes the all intervention if given early makes a lot of difference makes a lot of impact so this is what we were able to achieve when it came to inclusion concluding remarks is the government as well as the minority institutes have to be included in rte otherwise if we are missing on to 83% there's no point pushing the 17% the overall quality will never improve quality norms need to be revised for urban versus rural size and type of the school no detentional policy needs to be removed children have to be admitted as per their academic level uh, what also gets missed on And no detention is that there is no early intervention happening. The children are not picked up early. Nothing happens. No remediation happens for these children. Emphasis on teachers' training. Inclusion has to be done in a phase-wise manner, and prompt, time-bound, fair compensation to the 25 percent marginalised children. If we could even get that in place, I think the schools will be okay with that. I think that's it. Thank you. we begin one one by one so let's pick up from the uh, clause that you mentioned on the age appropriate admissions right uh, so yes while rte talks about age appropriate admission to children in the school uh, it does not say that uh, you don't work for bringing the child to that level so uh, it talks about bridge courses it talks about number of provisions that are made by different state government and it actually asks the state government to come up with the those provisions so that children are brought up to the level of their i mean the required minimum level of learning which that age children should have it is not happening in practice is a different talk but it actually says that it has to happen and then you admit them into that class so um, that's one point on that um, you mentioned about number of schools being closed down and uh, um the 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 gap after uh, primary and upper primary and uh, primary eighth, upper primary ha ah, secondary senior secondary uh, let me tell you uh, government is doing lot of merging of schools because yes there is uh, because of uh, small schools and because of uh, the problem in the teacher student ratio so what they are doing we are bringing down or closing down small schools with extremely low enrollment and merging them with senior secondary so gradually you will see lot of schools closing down but they are coming up as composite schools so they'll be 1 to 12 they'll not be 1 to 8 and then then 9 10 and then 11 12 so those things are being closed down and they are coming up so that was one data discrepancy i just wanted to tell uh uh at times uh i mean it's both way people can see lot of uh 
people talk about uh, the policies have having i mean a pan india i mean there's no contextualization into it and we want to have different policies for different states it is good to talk that way but when you have to plan at the central level at the national level if you have different policies for different states as of now we have education being in the concurrent list means state and center both have the responsibility and because of that also there are so many discrepancies across states you will find states which are performing so poorly and absolutely not fulfilling any norms at the other end you see that there are states there are are which are actually outperforming i mean and uh, where government schools are doing really well now do you want to let them remain as they are by saying that acha ye state apni taraf se kar le or you want to have a uniform policy and see that at least minimum norms every state has to meet so that is how i look at them and that is why we need to have some pan india i mean policies which are across for the country but states can uh, based on their requirement or based on their reality can really put in provisions or clauses that is the freedom that policy comes with um do you want me to respond to this a little bit yeah yeah sure go ahead yeah. please see the thing is what i'm talking about is rural and urban mm. now the space constraints which are in the metros like mumbai delhi hyderabad bangalore is nowhere close to what you would find in probably jodhpur jaipur or probably when you go further down to satara or sangli so, so uh, what i am talking of that depending on the, uh, the uh, you put the cities into different tiers based on that you could have some norms okay i am not talking of i you perfectly have, understand you know, what you want to say that, but yeah. do does this mean that a city like delhi should be allowed to run a school in a three storied building so one one story can become a school do we want to say that because it is metro is, is, i will not agree to is it is the government following those norms let me it put should that. be it should so be is the minority institute there has to be provision norms? if the norms are not followed by 83% so if the norms are not being followed we need to have an accountability so system have, in place we cannot say that we no, do away we with the norms to, we need to relax the norms based on the requirement or based on the place that's what i'm trying to say we need, because this is not going to it has to be a phased by manner you cannot have all or none because it is going to impact the children it's going to impact the budget schools and they have we have enough evidence to show the quality of education in the government school is nowhere close to the private schools so that is what we are trying we are trying to basically come and say that either you pull this up all the norms have to apply to government schools also that's when the parents will take yes. it as a option to send the child to a government school right all norms have to be applied to all, all schools exactly. is something i agree but right. they cannot be separate for rural schools they cannot be separate for urban schools because norms have to be based on the quality standards which you want for your children they cannot be based on rural urban it, we can't say that rural children will have little less or because uh, context is different yes that cannot be the case i think people want to get into yes yeah. please Uh, and children as well delhi government schools are often two stories the new um, uh, schools which have come up in delhi government are actually two and three stories existing schools also of mcd and delhi government are often uh, two stories and there are huge number of students it was honestly a shock to me because i'm not from delhi but the number of students in each delhi school government senior secondary school is like 6000 and 7000 sometimes even 8000 in two shifts so it's like a large number and like what ma'am was saying it's a huge huge issue there is uh, i mean we all are discussing discussing this but i just had to interject but that this is happening uh, as far as i know there is no research which exists which says that the input norms that are required by the right to education act have any impact on learning outcomes as such from the research that is available and i think ccs has brought out a paper on it Uh, there is very minimal impact on how you, the impact uh, the input norms are prescribed by the right education act having any impact whatsoever on the learning outcome so if so what is the requirement of all these input norms especially when they are uh, proving a deterrent to few further additions to capacity yeah uh, first of all congratulations wonderful talk um, and with the set of data etc really really enjoyed it thank you uh, one uh, clarification question i had in one of the first third slide or something right. where uh, there was a, a minority status of couple of states and right. at one place it says christianity with a question mark right. so there was my uh, clarification <laughs> uh in terms of other questions and the the school closure thing that also picked up 
I understand that there was there were consolidation of the schools also specifically yeah, coming from Rajasthan, yes. but that is happening in government. I think what you mentioned about the school closure of private right. schools, so exactly. which is which is different from uh, the, the consolidation, of consolidation the thing. Um, in, and the second clarificatory question is at one point of time you talked about that 83 around 83 percent of private schools are minority schools no no i didn't right. i didn't say that i said that 80 percent of the schools are government schools uh -huh. if we take three percent of minority which includes your religious minority oh, okay, as okay, well okay. as the hindu linguistic okay, minority okay. Uh -huh. so 83 percent of schools actually go out of exempted I, I, from I, I, rt uh, you perfect, got it right perfect yeah that's what i mean. i i got it i yeah. how to say that all eight government schools are exempted they are exempted from the no, norms no, yes no, 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 no. If in, if otherwise, so, no. otherwise, the data with which uh, she has presented, which is available from MHRD MHRD. website, all those schools should have closed down actually. Yes, exactly. <laughs> See, they, they have no limit to compliance. Your private budget, private schools have to comply, and within three years, they have to comply. That's the difference. They don't, they don't, they don't. They don't, and they are actually exempted uh, when it comes to infrastructure. I'll show you, you came midway and you didn't see my earlier slides. The whole point is that, that's what we are all discussing this year. If it was if it was 97% following and 3% minority, we could have probably gotten away with it. The reason why we are discussing it here is because of that, right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sure.